This is Tyler Disney. This is Advanced Retro Adaptics. I thought I would start doing update episodes once a month, probably at most. Uh, so this is kind of a new thing. We'll see how it goes. So I've been very focused since January of 2020 on reducing my cost of living, and I am about done. I mean, I'm about done focusing on frugality. I finally feel like I've got radical frugality internalized to a certain point where I, it just doesn't take that much effort anymore. Uh, so I'm going to stop thinking about it. I have... So in 2019, I spent about $65,000. In 2020, I spent about thirty. In 2021, I spent about twenty. And last year, I spent about $10,000. Uh, and so this year I'm, I'm well going to be well below $10,000 probably. So, you know, in my opinion, under that threshold of 10 K is that's when you start to unlock some really interesting options <laughs> for things you can do. So from here on out, my attention is going to be more focused on pursuing those interesting options, such as, for example, uh, this year I got a permit to hike the PCT, the Pacific Crest Trail. Not the whole thing. I'm going to start from about from around here and I'm probably only going to walk through the high Sierras, maybe up through the middle of Oregon. So I'm not planning on doing the entire thing, Mexico to Canada, uh, but I plan on spending about two to three months on trail. I plan on spending a lot of time on uh, my bike this year, wandering around. So I traded my uh, my mountain bike, my old mountain bike that I had uh, with a friend for his surly long haul trucker. Uh, with with dirt tires on it. So planning on doing a lot of backpacking, a lot of wandering around the desert on that, planning on going up to Bishop, that sort of stuff. Um, I rode into town uh, a week or two ago. It took me three hours to get to town. It took me six hours to get back. Um, but I'm just in love with it. So I plan on spending a lot more time on the bike this year. I'm psyched to get the studio a bit more complete. Um, I'm going to put the south windows in. You can see right now they're just boards for those watching on YouTube. Um, I'm going to build a patio off the north side. I'm going to build a raised platform on the inside. Uh, so I don't need a desk. I don't need chairs. I'm kind of getting into the furniture free thing. And the platform I'm building is going to uh, help me do that and also solve some of my storage problems I have, which I'm not going to show you on the video. It's kind of a stretch goal for, for this year, but I'd like to build a small earth sheltered passive solar greenhouse. Um, which will serve double duty as a bathhouse. Uh, currently, my shower is just a you know, just a black bag that I throw on the roof of Serenity, and my toilet is out behind a bush, uh, which is a little rough in the winter. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting indoors uh, with those facilities. Um, and what better way to get indoors than in like a warm, light-filled greenhouse? I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, it's also... You know, I have a longer term vision for uh, building out a greater capacity here in the land to be able to host larger groups of people for longer periods of time to do what exactly with. Uh, it's kind of vague and fuzzy at this point, but I know that's kind of the direction I want to go in in terms of uh, capabilities. Um, so and these projects are kind of initial steps in that direction. I'm also uh, at the moment. I'm going to be working on a writing project, uh, maybe a book. I've already got close to 40,000 words on it. I haven't decided for sure what it's going to be, if it's going to be a book. Um, uh, but this year I'm going to finish whatever it is and uh, move on to other writing projects. I plan on just doing a lot of writing. So in terms of a deep dive, uh, I, I made some new rules for my FU stash. So what happened was when I got back from Europe, I was... Uh, I was a little concerned about how I was going to earn money. I hadn't really earned any money since uh, I got laid off from my engineering job in 2021. And I, I hadn't had any experience before then of piecing together money, you know, from this and that kind of work. So once I got back, I said yes to every single opportunity uh, for earning money that cropped up. And a little surprisingly to me, several remunerative projects that, that sounded interesting and fun, uh, popped up in the first month. Uh, so I dove into those. Unfortunately, I quickly overloaded myself. Uh, so it was, it was, it was a matter of too much of a good thing. You know, I got stressed. I became too busy and I started dropping other activities, uh, in order to meet my new obligations. 
not good. I was stressed, right? So I took a closer look at my finances and my approach and my philosophy. Um, and I realized that I didn't actually need to be earning uh, much money. I had a, I had a, a buffer. Um, and in fact, it'd be all right if I didn't earn any more for another couple of years, even if I could come up with a decent reason not to. And um, the other thing is that there's some activities and things that I'd like to do. I like to take a crack at that. I think I assume will eventually throw off some income kind of incidentally. Um, they won't throw off income immediately, but they, they will eventually. So you know, if I can spend time on those, then probably anyways, I'm going to be uh, earning some income from that. So I, I decided to pull back on my obligations as much as I could in order to maintain a comfortable margin of free time and space in my life, you know, which is sort of the whole reason I work so hard to get my cost of living down in the first place so that I have greater autonomy over how I spend my life energy, right? So anyways, this process of inquiry made me realize that I needed a better system or set of rules for thinking about my money. Uh, standard personal finance advice doesn't really apply, you know, to an aspiring solar punk polymath with a target cost of living of $5,000 a year, right? But in fact, ni neither really does standard fire rules of thumb. So I, I realized with the help of some friends that uh, I'd kind of sort of adopted a fire mindset towards money and earning money, uh, but it wasn't actually serving me well. It wasn't serving my circumstance well. Uh, so I came up with some heuristics. I'll skip the boring details. I'm not going to break it all down, but the gist is that I have a tiered system such that uh, tier four is like my tax deferred retirement accounts. I mostly just ignore those, leave them alone, pretend they don't exist. And then tiers one through three are my FU stash. They're the buckets of money that I live off of, right? Uh, they range from cash sitting in a checking account to I bonds. Um, it's basically a scale of money from I can get at this today if I want to uh, y you could get at it, but you probably don't want to touch it uh, for a couple of years, right? It's It's got some time to maturity. Uh, and the intent with what kind of buckets it in is is primarily just to avoid losses to inflation. I don't have an expectation of, of growth here. This is not a get rich quick scheme there. They're just trying to preserve uh, lost inflation. So anyways, each tier has a rule attached to it that tells me if there's anything I need to do, such as move surplus up a tier or pull some extra down from the tier above, depending on whether each tier is a little fat or a little lean. So long story short, my FU stash rules are designed to tell me one of two things. Uh, either, ooh, hey, uh, getting a little low, you need to like go actually earn some money or something. And it doesn't really matter if you like it or not, you just need to earn some money to be on the safe side. Um, at the moment, my rules are set up so that this happens if I get below three years of living expenses in my FU stash. It's kind of conservative. But also, since my cost of living is so low, it's not that conservative because you can imagine like if I need some kind of health operation or something like that, um, it could be a significant chunk of that. So three years. Um, and if that's not the case, then my system basically says, look, you have enough money. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Only say yes to remunerative activities if you really want to do them for reasons other than money. But don't let money be the reason that you do them. Right. And, and that's really the key. It's if and only if my FU stash starts to run low, it triggers me to go out and earn some efficient means of earning income, regardless of if it's really what I want to do. You know, otherwise, otherwise, if that's not the case, then it's like, do what you wanna and let serendipity do its thing. Um, as long as I keep an eye on my tiers and follow my rules, I should never get surprised by low funds. Um, and key point is, is that I'll avoid doing unnecessary work, doing unnecessary, undesirable work, right? Or, or too much or, or getting overloaded, which is just as bad as doing undesirable work as far as I can tell. So there's two reasons why I think the strategy is not wildly irresponsible. One, my cost of living is super low. And two, several of the things I want to do will likely generate some income at some point. 
Uh, so it's possible that within a year or two, they'll generate more money than I spend even. So particularly if, if it's true that at some point just doing what I want to do is going to throw off some amount of income, then, then overloading myself now to earn money that I don't actually need at the moment because I've got the FU stash and would have generated regardless in the future doing stuff I'd rather have been doing anyways, uh, it's totally nuts. So, so there it is. That's my sophisticated personal finance system. It's to say no to paid work if I'm not psyched on it. I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, it probably goes without saying, but this is oh so very much not financial advice. I spent the last three years really obsessed with radical frugality, applying holistic systems thinking to my skill activity web of goals, right? I've got backup plans and social safety nets up the wazoo. I will be fine. Uh, even if this turns out to be a dumb idea, like the worst case is just not that bad. It's like, I'll just go get a job. So, you know, to be clear, I think this approach is highly irresponsible and risky unless you have a multi-year financial buffer, super low expenses, an existing web of skills, including at least one that's highly efficient, doesn't require physical labor, that would be ideal, several fallback plan Bs, and ideally a robust social safety net. I say that because it's really conservative. I don't want anyone accusing me of of kind of like yoloing you know like oh it'll be fine don't worry about it like no you should worry about it like don't take risks you're not willing to take um and know what the downside is and for me the downside is like not that bad so i happen to have all of these things right i happen to have all these criteria for really conservative low downside system so with that in mind i think it'd be highly irresponsible of me to not go for it right I have one little eye blink of a shot at existence and so not taking full advantage of the privilege and blessings that the universe and its capricious wisdom has seen fit to bestow upon me it would be like spitting in the eye of God or something. It sounds like a stupid idea to me. So here goes. By the way, I've been listening to Nate Hagen's podcast, The Great Simplification. It is amazing. You should listen to it. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, of, I just recently listened to an older episode with Vicky Robin. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, she has this. She said she had this quote in there that I love: "Is don't throw money at it, throw competence at it." It's amazing. Uh, she's she's an OG. She's been a big inspiration uh, for my whole path. So you should definitely check that out. All right, that's it. Thanks. Let me know what you think.